Hey developers, how's it going? And in this video, I want to talk to you about how you can use Combine Framework to bind the view controller with the table view and in particular, the table view cell, all right? So I have a very exciting tutorial over here and a lesson to share with you. I mean, of course, you know, during my everyday tasks when I learn things, I would like to just share it. And it's also a journey for me to, you know, when I forget, I can come back to the video. All right, so as you can see, I've got a very exciting app over here. This is the shopping app. And you can think of this like, you know, Amazon, all right, or Walmart. And we have a list of uh, items over here with the price. Uh, we have the, uh, we have the uh, minus and the plus button that allows the user to add uh, this product, the number of quantity of this product into the cart. And also we have the heart shape over here where it allows the user to uh, like it. All right, so I want to show you uh, how this app kind of works first. So over here, notice that when I uh, when I when I pl uh, press the plus button, I actually count the quantity of the item inside the table view header over here. So I have three items of this stroller, and therefore it reflects three items here. But when I add also the monitor, maybe I add two of the monitor, I am able to populate the entire items uh, to be five. Okay, and also one more thing is that I also uh, am able to calculate the cost. All right, so two times four is eight. 8 plus 3, that will be 11. And uh, we are also able to uh, hut the events, to like the events, and we actually monitor that inside, oops, we actually monitor that inside the, uh, the console. So maybe let me just clear this. When I remove a monitor, notice that only the ceiling fan and the shirt are being liked, and when I hit on the PlayStation, we have the new entry over here. All right, and finally, when we hit the reset button, it resets everything, okay? and uh, we see that everything has been resetted, all right? The, total, the number of items is zero, the total cost is zero. So I'm gonna show you how uh, I, I, I built this using the combined framework, and most importantly, uh, what are the, what are the most common mistake, which is to introduce a retain cycle, and I wanna show you how, uh, what's the right way to structure this, okay? So let's start with the most basic, which is the product, okay? So this is just a strut over here, I have the name. I have the image name. So this image name, uh, these images are actually system name from the SF symbol. So um, if you have no idea what SF symbol is, you can actually download this. This is a library that is provided by Apple that gives you a bunch of icons over here. So you can just pick and choose uh, whatever you want and add it in, okay? Without having to add in any uh, assets. So over here, I have the price as well, and the ID, I'm keeping it really simple. So um, the price is one, ID is one, price is two, ID is two, so and so forth over here. Okay, and we have the name of the uh, product. Okay, so now we have, uh, we have talked about the product. Let's come to the uh, view controller first, or rather the table view controller. So we have the, uh, this is the data source. We have the products over here, which is an array. And over here, I, uh, I have a static method called collection, as you saw earlier. And this is just uh, basically just test data, okay? So rather than clouding the table view controller, I decide to just have it over here. Okay, so to observe the states of all these things, I have two published variables over here. I have the cart, okay? So what a cart does is that it, it, it tracks the number of products that are being added, all right? So as you can see, the key is actually the product and the value is actually an integer, all right? So uh, let me just kill this. If I'm to hit the plus button on the stroller, uh, notice over here, I'm able to print out stroller uh, dash one. If I hit it a second time, I get stroller dash two, stroller dash three. If I hit the PlayStation, I get stroller dash three and PlayStation dash one. I think you kind of understand where this is going. Okay, and finally, uh, not really finally, <laughs> the lights over here, it's, uh, it's a dictionary as well. Product to Boolean, all right? So if we uh, light, the product then uh, for this for the particular product it will be set to true okay so if i i think you saw earlier when i hit on the on the light uh, on the like button you see that i added the product name into a list of array okay so let's uh talk about let's talk about uh maybe the cell for row first how do we do the binding okay so this is quite standard stuff. We dequeue the cell, we, uh, we get the cell, oh, sorry, we get the product from the index path. And finally, we set this product into the cell itself, okay? Via this set product um, function. Okay, so guys, before I, before I continue, if you guys uh, want the source code, I've uploaded that into uh, GitHub. So you can just feel free to download the source file if you don't want to hear me talk about this. 
Okay, but if you want to hear my thought process, then continue watching this video. Okay, so set product, what, what am I passing in? I'm passing in the product, I'm passing in the quantity of the product as well. And how am I getting the quantity? I'm getting it from the cut, which is the dictionary that I mentioned over here. So by passing in the product itself, I'm able to get the value, which is the quantity. So, uh, so yeah. So obviously, as you can tell, right at the start when a view deload happens, cut and lights is going to be an empty dictionary, right? So uh, what I did over here is that if I can't find a value, then I will default this to be zero, okay? I think that, that, that makes sense. And also, it's like, uh, basically, I get it from the lights dictionary. Again, if I don't find any value, I default this to be zero. Okay, so over here, notice that cell dot event publisher. Okay, which means uh, I am exposing this event publisher, and I'm exposing some events that happens within the cell itself. Okay, so we're going to get to that uh, later. Over here, what happens is that uh, this is the sync method. So basically, you know that this is a a uh, a uh, 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 a combined publisher that emits events. Whenever I receive an event, I will uh, call the handle cell event function, okay, which is this guy over here. And what it does is that it just switches through the event. <clears throat> as you can see over here, I pass in the product, I pass in the index path as well as the event. I switch through this event and I handle those events. So as you can see, I have two events here, quantity the change, is an enum as well as hard the tab. So uh, when I get uh, the new quantity for the particular product over here, I just set the value into the dictionary. In the same way, uh, when the hard the tab, I check whether there is a value inside the lights dictionary. If there is not, then I'll set this to be true. Otherwise, I will inverse the value. All right. And finally, what I did was I would reload the cell to reflect. Uh, this uh, the new status of the cell itself okay so let's get back um, over here we have height for row uh, nothing much to talk about and we have here title for header and section okay so over here we return a string optional over here I return a string with the format number of items colon so you see over here and number of items in cart. So let's let's come to that. So this is a computed property. So what I did was that I, I go to the cart dictionary and I perform a reduce. So this is like the higher order function. And what I did was I uh, add up all the values inside all the items, okay? So let's come back down here again. And we have title for footer in section. So this will calculate the uh, total cost of all the items itself. So maybe let me just reset this. If I buy a shirt and a monitor, that will cost me $9. If I buy another uh, fan, it will cost me $12 in total. Again, how did I do it? Total cost. Again, I use the reduce method as well. And I add up all the prices of the particular product. And I multiply that by the number of products in the cart, okay? So now I think I've kind of gone through everything inside the uh, inside the table view controller. Okay, I think there's one, one more thing that I forgot. Okay, so as you can see, it's very simple. Inside view deload, I have the observe method over here. And what I did was that every time the card changes, I would observe that and I'll print that out. Okay, and how did I print out? Uh, why do I have a counter here? <laughs> okay, previously I was doing something over here. I don't need the counter anymore. Okay, I can remove that. So what, what we are doing over here is that we are um, iterating through the dictionary. Okay, as you know, the dictionary, it's not ordered, doesn't matter. And I'll print out the name, the key, which is the name, product.name, as well as V. V is the value, the value as you can see here, this is the uh, number, of, number of items of the particular product that has been added to the cut, so to speak. And I'll, I'll separate this with some kind of divider so that it's easy to understand, all right? So again, when I tap on uh, stroller, you see that this is, uh, I have one item of each of them. If I do two PlayStation, then I get two, play, two, two PlayStation, and this is the brand new state of the card. Okay, so for, uh, lights, dot, so for lights, I'm doing the same as well, but what I'm doing is that I'm filtering all the products itself, which has the uh, value as true let me see yeah so basically i'm just uh, printing out all the products that are light okay okay i think uh, i'm done with the uh with the table view controller let's go into the cell itself
Okay, so this is the exciting part here. So we have a product sell event. So this is an enum. So I specify this uh, event. So typically, if you have worked with table view cell before, it's very common to use a closure or some kind of delegate uh, a pattern, which is which is the same actually. Okay, but over here, I think this is a lot neater. So what I first did was that I established a pass through subject. Okay, and since this is a subject, I will call this an event subject. And the value is the product cell event. All right, so basically whatever activities that are happening inside, I can just tell the event subject that something is happening, whether the quantity did change or the heart did tap. Okay, and over here, and, and first notice that this is a private method, meaning to say only within the scope of the table view cell can this pass through subject be modified. Okay. However, notice over here that I have an event publisher, which is of type any publisher. It has the same signature over here. All right. And why do I do it this way? It's because I want this to be exposed. However, I don't want components outside of the table view cell to be able to modify this, uh, this pass through subject. And therefore, this is a read only. Okay. So over here, I have the cancelables. Um, as you know, when we use combined framework, we need this. Uh, if you're using Rx Swift, then this will be the equivalent of the uh, dispose bag. Okay, so over here, I have the uh, image view. I have the name label. I have the quantity label. Oh, sorry, the product image view is this one over here. And I have the heart button as well as the stepper. Okay, so one important thing to note is that the observation is actually um, let me come to this part over here the the storage of the cancelables is actually not the cancelable on the view controller level or, or the table view controller level so let me show it to you what happens if i do it this way instead okay let me just run this what's going to happen is that you'll get a memory leak okay so if i do something like this and if I hit the plus button, notice that I'm getting, I'm, I'm calling this like four times. And then if I do this often enough, you notice that one, two, three, four, five. So this is definitely not what you want because if let's say you have analytics inside this, this is going to go crazy. All right. You don't want, <laughs> you don't want your product manager to blow up on you. Okay. So this is the first part, the first mistake that I think that's very common. So what you want to do is that you want to bind this to the cells cancelable. That's the first thing, okay? So the second thing is you want to ensure that during the prepare for reuse method, you want to reset these cancelables. So this is also very important. If you don't do this, I believe you're going to get a retain cycle as well. So let's, uh, let's check it out. So I hit plus. Plus one, I get one printout. If I enqueue and dequeue the cells enough, I'm gonna get this problem as well. So guys, please take note. Don't you know miss out this step and crash your app, okay? So right now, notice that uh, once I set this in place, and if I end to hit one and do this uh, enqueuing and dequeuing of the cells again, I'm not gonna get this problem, which is which is what we want. All right. Okay, now let's get back to the table view cell. So we have the set product. I pass in a product. I pass in the quantity and the is light. So nothing much over here. Basically, I'm just uh, filling the labels over here for the image. I'm checking whether is light is true or not. If it's true, then I use fill, heart.fill. Otherwise, I use heart. Again, where am I getting this from? I'm getting it from SF symbol. So if you type in heart over here, you have the heart and the heart.fill, okay? So, um, yeah, okay, but the, the, the way that you initialize the image is through system name over here. Okay, so when Staple did change, what happens here? Staple did change happens when I, uh, let me see, when I hit on either the plus or the minus. So what I did was I sent this, uh, I, I get the, the value from the UI Staple and uh, by default, sender.value is a double. All right, what I need is a, an integer. So I cast it into an integer and I uh, send this event quantity to change and pass and pass in this value inside. Okay, so notice that when step on the change, I am not modifying the label over here. Okay, 
what's happening is that the event subject is sending this event to the table view controller okay which is true here so let me just put a breakpoint here when i hit plus okay notice that i i i reach here let me just uh resume that and let's come back to here again handle table uh table cell event okay so this line will actually be fired let me just do that one more time okay cut i will set a new value over here and notice that inside my observe function when cut is being modified i'm actually refreshing the table view or reloading the table view and therefore you can think of it as the event happens on the table view cell it gets sent to the table uh, table view controller and then uh, it observed that a data source has been modified and it caused the table view to reload all right i hope that makes sense okay so what else um the hard button i think this is also self-explanatory now uh, every time i hit the hard button i'm sending this event to the uh, table view controller via the cell for row uh, function over here handle cell event let me just put a breakpoint here I hit this over here i get over here and then finally i reload the rows that is uh, affected okay and, and and you might ask why did i not um actually this part i can also put that inside uh here as well i believe this should work as well so let me just try that uh let me do an unknown self here uh hold on okay maybe not i might not have the 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 index path over here but i believe if i do dot reload data that should work as well so let me just uh quickly give it a go if it fails then uh that's too bad <laughs> so all right so this this works as well so plus 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 as you can see all right and finally when i hit the reset button notice what 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 i'm what i'm doing is i am resetting the card as well as the lights notice that i did not need to call the table I, I did not need to reload data of the table view cell why is that it's because there is a listener on cut cut is a published um, property which means that this is this is also a, a publisher as well so every time cut is being modified the table view will reload every time lights is being modified the table view will reload and therefore when i hit the um, reset button notice that okay maybe let me just put a breakpoint here and here when i hit the, the reset button this is being triggered and this is being triggered and voila everything is reset to its original state all right guys i have spoken a lot and i hope that you found this uh, explanation that uh, useful feel free to drop some comments if you think i made a mistake or could improve this is again the mvc architecture i did not bother to make it you know mvvm because that would really complicate things i really wanted to show you um, how you can just do data binding with the table view cell and making sure that you don't create a you know memory leak all right again i will leave the uh, link inside the uh, description of the video so you can go check it out and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one cheers bye